everyone once again here from Unlock the Middle. My name is Dean Packard. I'm one of the co-founders of Unlock the Middle, and Sundays are all about getting a little better together in the field of education. We get excited from coast to coast as we bring on personalities that just rock the house and actually open doors for people's minds, spirits, and, and souls, and just become better together with all of us. I got my good friend Josh Tobar right with me now. Josh, you are traveling today, my friend, and you are stopping somewhere in the great state of Virginia, I believe, and it's great to have you with us as always. Talk to me, amigo. How are you? Hey, thank you. I'm doing great. Thanks. You know, we've had a great weekend with my boys. They're here in the car with me, parked outside of Walmart. I understand why people talk in their cars at Walmart. Stuff happens in life, but we had a great experience. If any of you have done, if none of you have done this, you got to do it before you die. You got to go see Virginia Tech, the start of the football game. Dean, you have to do this, brother. Enter Sandman will never be the same ever again. It was a great experience. Beautiful people in that part of the country. Very nice, very courteous, very pleasant. It was a great experience. Most importantly, as a father and two sons enjoying this. The beautiful country that's Virginia is just amazing here. The Roving Hills, I'm blessed that, you know, on his day, today, God's day, that I was able to witness all of these beautiful things going on. So it's thank you. It's been a great weekend so far. Well, awesome. I use that Enter Sandman for my football show each week with my football coach. And it has a great connection with the game. And, and I def it definitely does make the uh, the hair on the back of your neck stand up a little bit. And I can only imagine being in a stadium that filled, what that's like coming out. So really good stuff. 60, 66,000 people jumping up and down. <laughs> Including you and your sons, I'm sure, right? Oh, yeah. Made oh, yeah. the trip well well worth it. Well, hey, listen, we're doing a little special broadcast today on a Sunday afternoon to make this work for everybody here. So what do you say we jump right into it and we have a, another guest with us tonight? Let's rock and roll. David Verdu, nice to see you, man. Welcome to our show. How What's are you? And, hey, Guys, happy Sunday to you. Hey, we're, hey. we're, we're excited uh, to have you. Dude, I mean, Colorado Springs is beautiful today. I mean, everything's good. Listen, I watched your feed yesterday, Josh. That's my dream. But so when I go to schools all over the country, I go to universities and stop at them because there's culture there, bro. And if you think Va Tech, I'm telling you, Virginia Tech is amazing. Now you need to go to watch them roll in at Clemson or now or you go to uh, uh, where is it at LSU. Listen, you don't have to be a fan. Be a fan of the people, because when right. you go there, man, they are what? It's like, okay, we need this. Now, hear me. We need this in church. <laughs> we need people to park on Saturday night at churches and RVs and have parties. The problem is, is those big stadiums are outdoing us because everybody thinks it's entertainment. But, Josh, dude, the, uh, why didn't you invite me, man? Va tag, hey, baby. Hey, like, I'm going to tag you when we go. My boy here, I don't know why or from where he guys like sell as you. But you know what? I'm an SEC guy. I just came for Inter Sandman. So when I go to LSU, you're invited, bro. We'll meet there. You go from your part of the country. I go from my part, and we'll meet there. Uh, you know, I'm a. You can't hold this against me because there's no such thing anymore. But I'm a Pac-12 kid. I'm from oh, the Bay Area, right. you know. So disbanded. You, know, you are disbanded. <laughs> this just uh, hit. I don't know. I guess we're right into it, right? You know, guys. I coached with the. CU Buffalo, and I coached with the Air Force Academy. And now that they're changing all this, so we, one was Mountain West and the other wasn't, we were in the Big Ten. And and now everything switched. I'm going to tell you something. UCLA and USC are about to be handed because they're the ones going trap. The, 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 Texas only has to go to USC one time. USC has to go Texas and then to Illinois and then what? These kids are going to have to fly and travel. And now we're trying to treat them like pros. And I think there's going to be some uh, interesting things that happen. If you Would you agree with me? I mean, come on, man. It's going to evolve, man. It's going to evolve. And that's probably one of the things that we can't control, but it has to happen, which which is good. Hey, David, take a second here. Tell everybody a little bit of your background, your story, your origin, how you got to where you are today. Is this so the, the audience out there can get a little better feel for you? All right, man. Let me see if we can get this done in three minutes. Uh, I'm a Bay Area kid. I, I was raised with seven brothers. Uh, we ran the block and we had plenty of people to play with. So we were always outside playing. We were always using our imagination and getting out there. Um, after 
uh, high school, I joined the military and got out of the military and went to college. And during college and during the time there, man, God got a hold of me because uh, he wanted more from me. So he he asked uh, for me to go way beyond measure and do some things that um, I didn't understand at first because I started traveling and going to schools all over the country with way beyond measure. So I've been an educator all my life. And um, I moved to Colorado Springs in 1999. And I was the athletic director and coach at Church for All Nations, which was a, a really cool school. And um, yeah, I, I guess I'm lagging here or something. I guess my voice and everything is not anyways. I was just going to keep moving. I got here to Colorado Springs in 1999 and I got struck by lightning on a football field. And it was a, a very crazy week that um, I still suffer from today. And because of that, um, I have another story. And then a few years later, coaching and teaching and, and just uh, being an educator, um, I got asked to joined the Denver Nuggets, which was crazy. It was, it was uh, a lifetime change for me. And I, so I became an assistant coach with them. And then I went to see you Boulder in the air force Academy and I helped out and then God sort of separated me and put me on a rock and said, I want to take everything that we've taught and everything you've done. And I want you to teach character education. And I was like, what? I mean, I mean, isn't that what we're trying to do anyways? What do you mean? What do you mean? So he took me to Philippians 4, 8. Philippians 4, 8 talks about whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is kind, whatever is true. Think upon these things. When you think about that, I said, okay, what? what? He goes, now take the word think and make it an acronym. And you guys seen this think poster before. So um, you got to understand that this think poster didn't explode until I made like 17, 18 different posters. So maybe one of the posters at your school is the one that I designed because the think program is, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? And I go into schools with that from preschool all the way to the high school. And I do a dynamic presentation on what it's like to be true and helpful and inspiring and necessary and kind. And I do it with the different ages aspect in, in mind and um, it's a success. <laughs> I've been Alabama, Arkansas, Pennsylvania, South Carolina. I've been to Idaho, Northern California, all of Texas, all of Colorado. Um, and there's more Pennsylvania. I've, I've, and there's more in me. It's it's really cool. And now to end this story, I, I'm revamping my website. And I, now I have resources that people can go click on for like $9, $4. Resources on the Think program. Resources that they can grab for their school. So it's very inexpensive. And, and uh, that's what I love to do. I can't get away from it, guys. Just like you guys are principals. Education is in my heart. It's in my blood. I have tried to run get out of here gotta run but the more i try to run the more god tells me no i need you and it's not me us together corporately because people invite me to their school and say dude we've been teaching that for two years and now all of a sudden it clicks and they freaking bang because it's uncle fun guys it's 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 that one that comes in and says, dribble the basketball, go outside and play. And the dad looks at me and goes, I've been telling them that I do that for two years. I said, I know, but you also been telling him no a lot. Don't do that. Stop touching that. What are you? I haven't. I'm Uncle Fun, baby. I get to go in and they just like on every word. And you two look at me like, get over here. I've been telling them that. I said, I know they get it, but now it just clicked. All it is, is all I'm taking is the cord that you guys have 
you've established and you moved it close. Now I plug it in. That's all it is. So that's what we do on waybeyondmeasure.com. Love it. I can't, can't get away from it. That's beautiful. And you know, you're so right with what you said. It really captured me right now that where he wants you, he will place you. Where he wants you on this day, his day, he will place you and you're in the right place. Just like Dean, he was in the land of unicorns and uh, rainbows. And the, and the Lord Almighty said, nope, I need you to go somewhere else. So he places us where we need to be. And you know, let me follow up with that. Let's, let's learn a little bit more about David. David, how were you as a student in middle school and high school? What kind of student were you? And along the same lines, how did your parents influence, helped you as you evolved, grew up into your current career? How are you as a student? And how did your parents motivate you, influence you to this stage in your life? I had great parents, guys. My parents were amazing. Uh, they just had number six that thought he could fly by the seat of his pants because of his brothers. I was lazy, guys. There wasn't a bone in me. So people mistaken me for, man, this guy is just dumb. This guy don't do nothing. He that wasn't dumb. All I needed was somebody to believe in me and tell me to come on, do this. But no, it was, I was lazy. It was okay. You know, my parents would help me and do things for me. And my teachers were like, okay, it's all good. I got like seven more of you coming after you. So we'll just scoot you along. I think I was scooted, guys. Uh, my reading comprehension, I think in middle school, I was when I got put, they call it IEP now or whatever they call it. I, I was just in a special reading class where I didn't learn nothing. There was no reading. It was put on a headset and listen to seven leagues under the sea. You want to know every word by word? I will tell you. Put on this headset and listen to Hamlet. To be or not to be, that is the question, whether it's as noble in the mind to suffer thy slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take an arm against the sea of trouble. So my memory, it was like, but I didn't do it with my mouth. I didn't get to, oh. David, it's your turn to read. Yeah, all right. I'm not doing it. I can't. Yeah, you probably could have. You didn't want to, sir. Look at me when I'm talking to you, David. It wasn't your teachers or your parents. It was you. You had all the books. You had all the opportunities that your brother Paul had. You had everything that you needed. And you chose. So that's my story, guys. I just didn't. And so when I became 18 and I had scholarships for soccer, I was a, I was a keeper of the well, boys. I could play soccer. I was a goalie and I just, I was loud. People asked me, you need a, you need a microphone in the gym? <laughs> no, no, I don't. And I'm going to get my point across. My parents were amazing. My teachers were amazing. I wasn't so amazing. And so I graduate and get out of call or uh, get out of, um, boot camp, do my thing in the Navy, get out. And God calls me, man, I got saved boys. I mean, I got Holy Ghost filled, baptized. Next day I'm in the school. I got saved on a Sunday night. I'm teaching PE Monday at Calvary Christian School. They said, dude, time to go to college. So I went to Genesis Bible College and I did four years and two straight A's. And then I went to the University of Humboldt County and I got my master's in education all the time teaching, not knowing anything. But this was a thing that God just birthed in me. And it was like, I am and are a teacher, a people person. Uh, that's what I am. And then you move along and they're like, you got your master's. Wow. Become a principal. <laughs> no way. I don't want to cross the dark side, fellas. <laughs> I, I don't, I'd rather, I want to be with the kids and I'm a coach. That's how I deal. Or it's not that I'm not with the teachers or parents. I just choose to stay in my arena because I don't know what would I, I mean. 
I'm I'm mean guy. Parents would like, he's mean. You know, I go into I go into places and I got earrings or whatever, and they're like, "Do you drive a motorcycle?" I said, "No, I got a Fiat. I'm I'm on a Prius. I'm just kidding." But anyways, you know. So to answer your question, guys, it was me. It was me. You know, I'm thinking you could take those skills into your principalship, though, and still be a people person and a kid person. Those are the best principles out there. So instead of just working well, on the well, desk, I have this program called TAPS teachers, administrators, and parent support. Okay. And so I am. So now people are like, so now you're in, now you get in front. Yeah. I was in front of 150 principals in Arkansas just three weeks ago. And they're asking me, why do you do this? I said, because you needed to hear it again. And it needs to come in a way that we dance. Dude, I make principals dance. They get up. Make them real. It's a memory guys. Why? Why do the kids get to have all the fun? And then we sit there like we're two, we're principals. We need to teach me education. You got the education. You just need reminded to move, get up, have this guy's nuts, have freaking all these principals doing the cha cha. Da, 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 cha. I said, I told you I'd make you do it. And they're like, no way. I said, yes. You want to? Don't tell me. They said, "Man, that was so much fun." Yeah, get out of that. Was awesome. Get out of the box. Get out of the box and go be you. That's you you have, have to. Kids love that. You know, or, or I could have done this too. So I was at a seminar one time when I was with thirty something principals, and every one of them was on their laptop and phone. I just decided to keep going. And at the end, I said, "Any questions?" I said, "They said no, we're good." I said. I do. I have a question. And they went, okay, what's that? And I said, why do you expect your kids to learn? Because oh, because we had demand their attention. And I said, no, you don't. What did I say? Crickets. I said, every one of you was on your laptop. What's the name of my organization? Come on. Come on. Amen, brother. I'm glad you're saying that. Amen. It's just, it's it's hard, guys. I, I just want to be a I just want to be a help. Here's what's cool about you guys and your podcast. This is Sunday. Will you just go away? <laughs> to, to both of you. Get, get away. Sun, it's Sunday. Josh won't let that happen. Yeah. We have established a pattern of behavior, sir. And that is the form to success because the excellence it is, is a pattern of behavior. You got to shoot for the targets. Hey, David, very quickly. Now, I got a question for you. Who inspired you throughout your career and who currently is your motivating factor? So let's start with who inspired you. Then I want to know who currently motivates you. Oh, my gosh. It's, I think it starts with my mom when I was in eighth grade. Seventh grade, guys. This is a great story. So seventh grade, my mom is pushing me to be something different. There's something different about you. Get me on stage, put me in front of people, whatever it might be. So my mom comes up to me one night. I'm going to make it quick. She comes up to me one night and says, hey, let's go to TCBY. Remember TCBY? The country's best yogurt. Remember that? Yeah. TCBY. All right. So, dude, yeah. So I get in the car. We go to TCBY. And then we start heading downtown. And where are we going? She goes, I said, and what are those, what are those foo-foo shoes in the back? He goes, those dance shoes? And I says, size nine? Whose are those? She goes, well, I just want you to trust me. I said, what? I don't, I said, she trust me. So we pull up to a ballet studio, La Bella's in Petaluma Ballet Studio. She goes, I'm trying out for a musical. It's with harmonies and harmonettes. We need kids to dance. I told them about you. And I think you'd be an amazing actor get you in front of people you travel with your dad everywhere who's a motivational speaker for youth departments all over the all over the country you're ready this is dumb so i get in there and i put my shoes on as soon as i go in this is me i noticed 40 girls in the corner 40 and in the other corner it was like seven guys i went the odds are really good here I look to my mother and my mom does this and I do this. And I said, I'm going to become the best dancer ever. 
I was in Oklahoma Kismet, Once Upon a Mattress. I did all these musicals and plays. I started singing and writing music. And it was just the birth of what I do now. All I do is I am Uncle Fun. I entertain the troops. My pre-K, my elementary school super character dude, off the hook, dude. Because we're teaching Suso, stand up, stand out. Respect, love, kindness. We think before we speak. And so my mom is the one that inspired me. And now my dad is the one that taught me how to do it. And so now it is absolutely 100% without being like cliche. It's uh, God, the Holy Spirit in me. Absolutely. Number one, but number two, it's if you have a wife that is behind you, that says, go for it. So I just remember guys, when I started, Many, many years ago, waking up one morning and my Adrian rolled over and looked at me in the eyes and said, David, David, go for it. And it was like, ding, ding, ding. I went and chased the chicken. I caught it. I I was ready, man. That's my inspiration. My wife, big time right now. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I, I love what you just said right now, especially with the motivation there at home. Hey, um, let me ask you, you know, after the last couple of years, the shutdown and this gap that we've created that we're going to keep on seeing the ripple effects for, I mean, years and years to come right now, mental health has been one of the issues at the forefront of public education. How can we as educators now better serve our students in the midst of all this pandemonium, all this, all these new issues that have surfaced because of the lockdown? Wow. That's a, that's such a great question. What a listen is first off, it takes all of us. It's not just one person. You can't have your eyes on everybody. Okay. And so here's what we need to do guys. Oh, how do I do this? We talk a lot about mental health and we make more posters and we do a lot more things. The, the thing that we need to do is we need to get back to reality and realism. These are students that are students. They are bombarded with millions of items. If you have an iPhone and you are in junior high, in 10 days, you will receive as much info as you want and it will surpass your great, great grandparents knowledge in a lifetime. And you're talking to me about how do we We need to get back to childhood. We need to get back to putting pencils in our kids' hands. We need to get back to not doing, listen, everything's changed. Dude, you don't have to write your own sentences anymore. Put in three words and hit AI. And how are you going to know? Because you want me to email it to you anyways. So it's rea- the reality is, is that we all are going through something. We have to stick together. We do not have the same answers for everybody. My answer for that student is not the same answer for that student. But I do have an answer for teachers. And it ain't easy. We have to stop teaching to teach and we have to start teaching to learn. And here's what I mean by that. Don't put a piece of paper in front of me and say, read that and put all that under that piece of paper. (laughs) What? Huh? What? I could read that, but as soon as I read that, I forget that and put it onto that. No, but if you show me, if you teach me the way I learn, and it's not easy, because how are you going to do that when you got a 1 to 28 ratio? That's a good point. I, 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 Teachers are thrust into because, listen, not only do we have butts in the seat for junior high, high schoolers, but now we have elementary school teaching twos now. So now we got to make sure they're there during the week and we got to go, okay, do the best that you can. Because this is all on the teacher. And if if I'm not doing a very good job, then it's going to be a reflection (laughs) of me. Oh, God. You know, 
And the other part of that, of that is finding the value in what they do and making sure they have a sense of belonging and appreciation. And, you know, Josh does a great job in his school with making sure that everybody feels part of the learning community. And I'll tell you, that just that just moves mountains when it comes to creating that uh, learning family. So, um, you know, those things are so important. I'm glad you brought that up. Dave, I have another question for you in regards to character and why it's so important during times such as now post pandemic. And what, how do you see character and what does that mean? Why is the, someone's character? Right. So character is a very personal thing. And for me to tell you what character is, I, I have to show you, see, uh, the word is no joke because you see your outward fruits are really um, tag into what your inward roots are. And so character is an individual thing where people need to learn. I was taught character. If I walked to a door and my father was near me and I didn't see the people, people around me and I didn't open that door to help, I'm going to be taught a lesson. Now, it was a very positive lesson, very sincere, but I won't forget it because it's a taught behavior. Um, character right now is a um, is a word that we're throwing around, but we're not really teaching the root of it. So what what is character and how do we do that? So I go back. And I teach a program for preschool called Stop Bob. And it's a little soccer ball. And each kid gets one. And we start right there. And we start teaching about character. Because we have to wake the ball up. And we don't do it by shaking the ball and freaking them out. It's just, it's it's a taught, it's a taught thing. And what, what I love what you said uh, about Josh is that he is trying to make everybody welcome and stuff. So, it is okay to teach character during the day. I liken it like this, boys, like a referee, okay? Um, when the kids are on the field and a hanky's thrown, everybody stops. What happened? And then we call them out. That dude right there was offside. Look, see him right there, that dude. Ha! You can't do that. As a matter of fact, there's a penalty five yards back. I did the same thing in my class. I still do when I sub. I bring a yellow hanky. If someone's out of line, I throw a hanky and everyone goes, what happened? Johnny picked the hanky up. Dang it. And they know exactly what they did. They bring me the hanky and they said, man, I'm sorry. I said, you don't owe me nothing. Julie, when you walk by her and hit her elbow and the whole pen skipped through her paper, that's who you need to go talk. Oh, okay. And by the way, that's a five yard penalty, bro. Just saying. Go sit down. Yes, sir. Hands me the hanky, goes and sits down. What's wrong with that? We call them out. I started in preschool. When you throw a hanky in preschool, dude, every kid, because they want to know who did it, who was it. And that kid that did it is like, dang it. I didn't think he was walking. Yes, there's referees all around you. Character starts with helping people to understand how you can serve them and help them. That's character. Character starts with you. It's an inner, inner, uh, personal root with outside fruit that is patience, love, kindness, beauty, everything that you can think of as far as good fruit. Perfect, perfect layout of that. I absolutely, I love the, I love the yellow hanky. I am an official, so I get that stuff. And I'll, and I'll tell you, why not bring it into the real world? Um, yeah, because also they thrive on structure and they want to know when they step out of bounds. Kids do. Dude. Even teachers do. And they want people to be held they, accountable. My silly, silly, silly stuff, guys, works. So I do Jolly Rancher Thursday. Jolly Rancher Thursday, guys. Seats, I'm telling you, I have schools in Arkansas that they call me and say, you know, Jolly Rancher Thursday, nobody's not here. They're always here on Thursday. Nobody is not coming to school on Thursday. Why? Because everyone wants a freaking Jolly Rancher, man. Third Jolly. So what you do is your administrators, you find your teachers and you hand them each five pieces of candy. Those teachers find a student, just one in their class, and they give them 
six pieces. Sorry to give them one of them is theirs. The other five are to be distributed throughout the day. Just to kids they do not know and say, hey, yeah, have a Jolly Rancher through it. Yeah, I got, I got Jolly Rancher and it's a watermelon. <laughs> Double whammy. And they're like, dude, that was awesome. And we teach them, this is the third week. What's wrong? What do you mean? What's wrong? This is, I haven't gotten a Jolly Rancher. I said, your time's coming. And then two weeks later, they have all the Jolly Ranchers and they get one and they have to give the other five away. In reality, that sort of sucks. How about I keep five and give one out? Mm -mm. That's not what you're meant for. Not what, not, that's not what it's about. Give, give, give. So anyways. What, I hope I answered. That's an awesome. I love that. Yeah, I might be stealing that. You might have a new one there on Thursday for me, Dean. I'm going to steal that hey, one. Right hey, and remember, you can use Smarties, too. Ah, yeah. Okay. Love Smarties. So especially for the elementary school kids, you want to go Smarties. I said never Dum Dums. Right. Always Smarties. Right. I'm just saying. I said Dum Dums um, should be a candy that is banned from schools. I'm sorry. Words are powerful. True. And um, and so, anyways, sorry. That was and that was your commercial break. Hopefully, they'll pay us Smarties and Jolly Ranchers. See if we can get them to sponsor us. Hey, well, David, along the same lines, right there. You know, I love the role modeling and throwing the flags and everything, especially today um, with the beautiful cell phones that we have in our hands. That uh, to me, it's a, such a positive tool. But then again, that's where we have a lot of our bullying going on with Snapchat and on TikTok. So, what can you? let educators out there know administrators on how we could push forward this whole concept of promoting anti-bullying to stop this nonsense because you know what every school should be a linus blanket where kids feel comfortable the second they walk in and the second they leave it shouldn't be an uncomfortable thing waiting for i iphone airdrop at lunchtime so talk to us about anti-bullying right well here's the thing uh we talked about the cell phone a little bit and all the information that comes at kids every day the problem starts with how soon do we give our kids a cell phone i think that our uh, we as parents need to start stepping up and really um teaching them you know hey when the light on the uh I don't even know what they're called anymore. The street light comes on, go home. <laughs> Just go home at street light. It's not that way anymore, guys. And if we can't get everybody on the same page, then all we can do is um, uh, become uh, 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 dent, dentless repair people. You know what I mean? Pull them out, pull them out. I'm sorry, guys. We're not going to be able to, by ourselves, nip everything in the bud. Uh, a lot of schools make sure the phones are uh, absolutely uh, unacceptable. They cannot be there. Well, I need to get a hold of my child. Well, then you would call the school. We will call them out of class and they will call you. I have a lot of schools like that. I've been to the uh, Colorado uh, Military Academy School. Every dude, I can get you in. I can get you guys there. And you're like, oh, my gosh. They, they. They're standing at attention. They just are, I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, they were taught. It is what it is. We get the kids for, with as far as like really getting to get into them, we got an hour and 15, 20 minutes because of their minds and stuff. When they leave and go home, dude, there's a whole nother process that goes. And bullying when we were younger, was blah, 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 blah. Then you go home and you're like, I don't, there's nothing else. If you didn't have a note or whatever and he didn't have your phone, you know, he wouldn't be able to call you or something. Nowadays, it's 247. Take the phone from your kids, let them be children and let them go. If you are an adult and you have people bullying you, delete, go away, find a new group. Those aren't your people, okay? But to stay there and try to fight it, it's not, it's not going to fly. So like you said, Josh, make your phone a tool, not a weapon, a tool for learning and a tool for growing. 
You're going to have your naysayers. You're going to have your people. Why? Why ain't I getting enough schools? I don't know why. I still have plenty of room. I've got plenty of dates available. It's very inexpensive. You're going to, well, we got to fly you. No, listen, it's so inexpensive. You'll flip. I don't, I'm not doing it for cash, big money. I'm doing it so that we can get the word out. Let's work together. Your cell phone is two things, life or death. That's it. You either speak life, you speak death. That's it. You're building or you're destructing. And so what are you going to use your, use your tool for? That's your tool. You could use it for how you want. How do we stop cyberbullying? One phone at a time. And it starts with me. That's a, that's a great, great, great point. And it's something that Josh and I deal with and every principal around the country deals with on a daily basis. You know, these kids, these phones are attached to their hips. And quite frankly, they live that secondary life. And it really, it's probably their primary life through that one tool. So again, I think there have been a lot of innovative ways in which principals have removed that tool from the classroom to get the integrity back, but it's still a fabric of their world and where they're going to be moving into when they get out of uh, traditional high schools. So you got to find a way to embrace it the best you can. Dave, my next question is pretty simple. And I, well, I say it's simple. It's not simple. Prior to COVID and prior to shutdown, you know, there were always mental health issues in schools and kids were struggling. And the highest level of, of tiered struggle is, is, is suicidal ideation and happening. It's true. It's real. Um, you know, we have 1,200 kids in our school and there's always somebody, you know, getting triaged, somebody going to get wraparound services because of how they're feeling. How do we combat that today, especially coming back? I mean, our kids' mental health is the single most important thing for any student to be successful in education. And it's um, it's it, they're growing up in a world that just has so many moving parts. And, mm -hmm. you know, you sometimes look at families and where they're at and things of that nature, and it all plays a factor into the overall mental health. But how do we help prevent the levels of students now looking at suicide as, as options. And it's, it's not an option. It can never be an option. Mm -mm. Come on guys. Um, that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I had 50 foster kids and I've had two of them commit suicide. And it's, uh, it's a hard thing. I deal with a son who's got schizophrenia and I've had to do some horrible things to keep him going that I wouldn't wish upon anybody. The key is communication. Here's what, but here's the problem. You guys go to church on Sunday. So you got people that come up to you and go, Hey brother. Hey, bro. first off, they don't know your name because they call you brother. Hey brother, how you doing? And then here's the two things. I look at them straight on into eyeball to eyeball. Like you two look at me right now. Eyeball to eyeball right now. Both of you right ball. I could give you surface or I can give you depth. Which one are you ready for? Don't ask me how I'm doing unless you're ready. The last couple of days, my mind has been wandering. Listen, I got ADD and most of the alphabet fellas. There's something inside me. When I got struck by lightning and I have to wear hearing aids and I get phonophobia and I get thoughts and I get, I have to deal with it too. The problem is, is that we, we, we say we need to communicate and we need to talk about it. And we need to get this out in the open. But as soon as you go ask a kid, Hey, how's it going? What's going on? Um, you don't know what type of surface you're going to get. So when you do that, you need to be ready and open and honest because sometimes you got to ask the hard question. Listen, I just been watching you the last couple of days. I just want you to know that I'm here for you and I want to be here for you. I have to ask you hard questions. I know what's up. I said, are you having any type of hard thoughts hurting yourself? I never use the word suicide. See, everything is, all they want to do is feel something. So when you hurt yourself, cutting, which is one of my books, Cutting Scars of Pain, you want to feel something. And so when you ask them, how are you feeling? You're going to try, you have to try to help them. And so I stop and pause. When was the last time you thought about hurting somebody or hurting yourself? Shut your mouth. Because the next person that talks wins.
and you don't want to win. Trust me. They need to win. So our communication needs to be wide open. But we also need to teach that to everybody. Do not just, if it's just me going to every person in your school, it's going to take me four weeks, five weeks. And if you'd like to pay me, I'm all in. But that's just the way it is. So now we got to get a group of people. So my SUSO group, Stand Up, Stand Out, our elementary, middle school, high school club, we teach them how to do that. They're the ones that are in charge of Jolly Rancher Thursday. They're the ones that are in charge of the SUSO leadership training, which is all done and typed out and ready to roll. They're the ones that get to bring up the topics and the, what they want to discuss and how they want to discuss it. And so we got to start teaching others to be a part of that. Because when it's too late, who's with me? It's too late. And so I want to educate some kids on how to keep temporary problems temporary. You with me? We never want to turn a temporary situation into permanent. People need to hear that. Communication. And it takes a family of everybody one word one voice one word don't work it don't work dave i like i like i love that you just said that because that's one of the things that i always talk to our team members about um one of the one of my counseling classes i have a degree in school counseling um one of my professors stated that we need to be careful when we have those in, uh, conversations with kids and we start scratching because that's like an operation and if we cut too deep in a simple conversation, we we need to have the time to put everything back in again. So it's very crucial that we're able to have those conversations and be able to sum up and close off because you know what? We might be hitting some wounds. And if we hit some wounds, we better make, make the time to follow up if the kid was willing to open up to us. And it's crucial. And a lot of times that's when team members, they're like, oh, I need your help, this student. Yeah, you went in too deep and you weren't ready to put it back inside. So that's why it's crucial that, you know, all of us, as like you said, it's not a one person per, uh, situation. It's all of us working together to help that kid. So it does not become a permanent event, that's, that's as you right. stated. Hey, you know what, David, it, you, man, you're, you're, you're just dropping some some bombs big time right now. I, I appreciate you. I know that the majority of the country is out tomorrow. I don't know about Massachusetts. Those guys are always working. But if, <laughs> but, but if you but if you have. Uh, an idea or in a thought for edu some some people work Monday and Tuesday and then they take off Thanksgiving. Do you have any thoughts for educators starting tomorrow right before Thanksgiving? Any words of wisdom, anything to keep them going, if not throughout the Christmas vacation? All right, time to coach. You know why you got into this job. You know that the practice, practice, Practice leads you to where you are and can be successful today in your classroom, wherever you might be. At the same time, you need to pick the right fuel station. Do you understand? Because if you don't go fuel up, you run out of gas. Thank God for Thanksgiving because now I got this break. No. You should be fueled up enough to get through so that you can get more energy in your thanks. Okay. During Thanksgiving, I want you to come to a realization of what are you doing and why and who are you doing it for, okay? Um, we need educators that want to get in there and, and, and fight and do the things that are necessary to help. You are huge. You are a somebody. People are watching you. You're not just that person in those four squares in a wall trying to do Listen, I've been doing this for four, over three decades. I'm sitting at a ball game this summer in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And about the third inning, I hear, coach! And I went, no way. And I turn around and I look and I see some of the football players that I coached 20 years ago. Turn around. It was Zach and Jim and Bobby. And I said, you guys are, he goes, we haven't been together in almost 15, 16 years. Then we show up here and our coaches here. What? 
Do you know what they looked at me and said? You're the best. You're the greatest person. I have never forgot. Listen to me, teachers. I've never forgot. That's who you are. Don't you forget who you are and the lives that you're building. You're planting roots. You may not see the fruit, but you will, especially at a ball game 20 years later. Holy schmoly, bowly, roly. That'll get you through. Okay? No, it's not easy. Your time is coming. God bless you. I'm Coach Verdu. Every interaction you have with a youngster in front of you can make a difference down the road in some capacity. I say it all the time. That's why teachers, I say your job is probably the most important job in the world today. And you have to understand the magnitude of your job, man. So Dave, thank you so much for actually bringing that stuff out. Dave, how can people get uh, solidify your talents in their schools? Talk about this for a second. How, if they wanna bring you to their school, what do they need to do? Perfect. It's, it's really simple, guys. Uh, go to my website waybeyondmeasure.com. You can Google my name, David Verdu, V as in Victor, E-R-D-U, and just check it out and go, what? And I'm telling you, it's not about me. I just was revealed some answers and I put them into 40 years worth of acting and development and music and just fun, man, because we build memories. Check us out, waybeyondmeasure.com, okay? We're, we're not for everybody, but we're for a lot of people. And I'm telling you right now, if you reach out, we can do this together. It's not the Lone Ranger, you pay me one time, have a nice day. I'm not going anywhere. My banners, my posters, all my stuff that educate are going to be there. I'm a click away. I can get into anybody's classroom now. You just zoom me in. Let's go. So we're here for you. We're praying for you. We want you to know that um, um, you can do it. We want to be of any of assistance we can. And we're not. We're very, very inexpensive. You might be very surprised. Give us a call today. Waybeyondmeasure.com. What do you think of that, JT? Awesome. Thank you, David. Awesome. Bunch of home runs going out there. Call out, reach out, call him, social media, get a hold of him. Very important. But hey, it's not over. It is not over. Dean Packard, it's not over. This Wednesday, this Wednesday, the Red Zone. Join us for Teacher Talk, Episode 1. Teacher Talk, this Wednesday, Episode 1, 9 p.m. Eastern. This Wednesday, join us. And next week, Dr. Garcia will be joining us for the flagship show. So reach out. Stay in touch, and I'm very thankful for you, David. Dean Packard, you young man, you 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 such novice in this profession. I am so thankful that we're connected here together. That's as much as a bromance as I get on Thanksgiving. <laughs> God bless you. And you know what? I need everyone out there to rock on and be thankful for those beautiful people in your house. Kiss them and kiss them and kiss them because that's not guaranteed tomorrow. Love your family. There it is right there, Josh. Thank you very much. David, thank you so much for joining us, man. You made everybody a little bit better, especially these two older administrators who sometimes think that the capacity is never built. It just got a little bit better because of you here today, man. So thanks for joining us. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you, your family. And more importantly, again, Unlock the Middle is here. We're going to partner with you and uh, we're going to spread the word. We want to make you get into those classrooms and help those teachers That's and good. help those schools become better. There it is right there. What more can I say? Have a wonderful week, everybody. David, Josh, on behalf of both of you, have a great week, everybody. Take care.